In this video, I wanted to talk a little bit about fuel pump circuits. So we're working on one of the lab engines here, an old 7.4, um, that has the older style relays here. They're the full ISO relays, and you have two of them. So one of them is for the ignition, which basically comes from the key switch. So when you turn the key switch on, power comes from the key switch out of the ignition wire purple, comes down through the harness, and comes up and energizes this relay. So when that relay is energized, then it supplies power to several other things on the engine. So it supplies power to the excitation circuit, for the alternator. It supplies power to the ignition, for the ignition module, because this has a distributor in it. It supplies power to the ignition coil. It also supplies power to the ECM. So it awakens the ECM. That's one of the key features of this relay. The other relay next to it is the fuel pump relay. So the fuel pump relay is the one that supplies power directly to the two fuel pumps and that will make them run. When you first turn the key on, the first thing you should hear is you should hear the alarm tone. And then after you hear the alarm tone, then you should hear the fuel pumps come on. Let me turn the key on. Now the fuel pumps can actually sound like they come on first because the alarm is being triggered by the ECM. Now, which one's which? I can look in the wiring diagram or I can cheat. I can just pull one of the relays out and figure out which one's which. If I pull the ignition relay out and shoot it across the engine, it's always entertaining. Um, I don't know which one's which, but if I pull one of them out and I turn the key on and I don't hear an alarm, I don't hear anything, then that's the ignition relay. I know that because I don't hear the alarm and I don't hear the fuel pumps run, all right? So if I wanted to work on the engine, um, say you wanna work on the uh, fuel injection system and you want to um, bleed down the fuel system, I would remove the fuel pump relay and I would put the ignition relay back in. And then I can crank the engine over and I can delete all the fuel in the fuel rail, the fuel pressure, because the fuel pump won't run. So again, if I turn the key on, there's the alarm. The ECM will be awakened. I could crank the engine over, inject the fuel, and dump it in the cylinders, run it out of fuel. That's how I can relieve fuel pressure, okay? Now, we have these two relays, so let's talk a little bit about the functionality of the fuel pump circuit. So basically what you have is you're gonna have power goes to the fuel pump relay that comes off of a fuse on the engine. That goes into pin 85. Pin 86 is a constant ground someplace on the engine. All right, then you have 30 is power into the relay, 87 is your park position, and then 87 splits off and goes to the, fuel, the two fuel pump um, circuits. But if you look underneath, you'll see the yellow wires underneath that. All right, so the fuel pump relay the excitation side, the pulling coil side, is being supplied power all the time, so you have power on there. So I could take a 12 volt test light or a multimeter and I can test that pin to see if I have power. So let's say you turn the key on the alarm, the alarm tones, but you don't hear the fuel pumps run. So I wanna make sure the fuel pump relay isn't the problem, so easy fix. Take the first relay out, take the second relay out, put the ignition relay where the fuel pump relay was, and then put this fuel pump relay back there. Now, if the fuel pump relay was bad and I switch it, then you won't hear the alarm and nothing would happen. But in this case, there it is. Okay, so basically that's a quick check just to do that. Once you get beyond that, if it's not the relay, then you're gonna have to start testing the circuit. So what I'm going to do is I'll pull up the wiring diagram and I'll show you the, the uh, placement of the relays and the terminals and then how you would go about testing that. All right, I have the relay out, the fuel pump relay out, and we're going to test this circuit real quick. So what's nice, I have the ground here right on the alternator and I can test for pin 30 to see if I have power. So I have power on pin 30 battery voltage there. I have a 
power on pin 85. So here's my question is, if the fuel pumps didn't run, then either the relay's bad, which we swapped them, and that's not the case. So we know the two relays are okay because they both make the alarm tone in this socket. So the next thing I wanna do is I wanna see is power coming out of the relay. Well, you know if the relay switches both sides, then it is. So I might not have power to the other end. But what I really wanna know is I wanna know since I have power here, the switch side of the circuit is the side that is from the ECM, which is grounding this circuit. So that grounds the pull-in coil. So I have power come into the pull-in coil, the relay, and it goes to ground here. So what I'm gonna do is switch my leads. I have to find a power source, which I can use the any of the other terminals that I know that are power, and that happens to be this one. And then what I can do is I can simply hold this on this terminal, and then I can hold this to the ground terminal, which is actually switched ground. And then what I'm gonna do is I wanna know if the ECM's ground in that circuit, and it is. And then it'll, it's, so you can see that the circuit from the ECM is grounding the relay, the pulling coil. All right, so we know the relay is not the problem. We know the pulling coil is not the problem. So maybe that circuit out is the problem. Now, what if we didn't have any power on this terminal or the other terminal because they share a common feed and that would be the fuse, okay? So pin 30, pin 87, that goes out to the, to the fuel pumps. You have pin 85, which is power from the same fuse for pin 30. And then you have the output, which is the pulling cool ground that goes to the ECM. And you have to look up in the book to find out which uh, ECM terminal that would be. And that would be pinning the harness out. So at that point, then I'd have to come back here to where the ECM is. And I would have to find out which pin that is.